The world's longest aircraft finally took to the skies on its maiden flight this week. The Airlander 10's creators say the plane can land just about anywhere and stay aloft for days on end without refueling. Jonathan Vigliotti visited the aircraft in its hangar north of London. Measuring in around the width and length of a football field, the Airlander 10 is not what you'd call conventional. The world's longest aircraft is in fact a Frankenstein of technologies, taking the shape and lift benefits of a blimp and combining them with the maneuverability of a helicopter and the load capacity of a small cargo plane. Bring you up here. But Chief Test Pilot David Burns, who was at the controls for the Airlander's maiden flight, says you need to look beyond the shape of the hull, which has been, you could say, the butt of some jokes, to appreciate this very modern flying machine. The technologies that you talk about, what will it enable this aircraft to do? Well, basically it enables it to, to stay aloft a whole lot longer and also to operate from almost any surface. Do you see this as a game changer when it comes to humanitarian crises? Well, there's huge potential there because this could go into, like if a tsunami has, has wiped out everything, you've got a whole lot of mud and, 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 and water areas, this can land on, on the remaining stuff that's there, take in some aid relief, take out the injured casualties. We're here underneath the belly of this ship, and this is an area where more than 11 tons of cargo can be carried, anything from humanitarian aid to commercial goods. It can spend days in the air without refueling, but can't compete with planes or helicopters when it comes to speed. So the hull is effectively wing-shaped, so we get up to 40% of our lift aerodynamically or from the wing. Um, we then get around 60% of our lift from being filled with helium, a lighter than air inert gas, so it doesn't burn or explode. Um, and that gives us the ultra efficiency of basically not having to carry a whole load of weight. And then the engines turn or vector, which allows us to get plus or minus 25% of lift and also allows us to hover just like a helicopter can. The Airlander 10 let's face it, looks more like a flying whale than it does a bird. And sure, big and slow, not necessarily selling points, but its creators say its range of technologies makes it a little bit different. It doesn't need an airport or to be tethered to the ground like other airships, benefits that undoubtedly appealed to the U.S. Army, for whom the technology was originally developed before the program was canceled due to the troop drawdown in Afghanistan and budget cuts. Daniel says this allowed the company to buy it back and develop the aircraft for civilian uses. The Airlander's biggest challenge, however, has been overcoming its troubled family history. Say the word airship, and people usually think of the Hindenburg disaster of 1937. Oh my God, it's going down. Even modern blimps occasionally get a bad rap. In October, this unmanned military blimp came loose from its moorings and drifted across central Pennsylvania, tearing up power lines and causing chaos. Daniel says there are many misconceptions. We often get people saying, well, surely it pops like a balloon. Well, no, it doesn't. So we could riddle that hull with bullets. The helium is under such low pressure that it would gradually seep out. We're not an airship. We're the airlander. We are one of the safest forms of transport. It's a bold statement, but there's already competition in the industry. Lockheed Martin is developing its own model. I think it's good for the industry. The, the market is plenty big enough for two people to be in there competing. And despite the Airlander's considerable size, the sky is plenty big enough, too. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Jonathan Vigliotti, London. I love the sight of this thing, and I love I love what Jonathan called it a Frankenstein of technology. Yeah, well, the lift part of it is so interesting to me, right? How you have a yeah. combination of the design of the actual airship mm -hmm. and the helium, uh, the fact that that technology exists where they can marry all of that. I want to know how it does, though, when there's severe weather. I know what yeah. it's like to be in a plane, right? We all know what that's like, right. where you hit a rough patch of turbulence. What does that feel like? I've um, never actually ridden in an airship, so I don't know, but you're yeah. right. It would be very interesting to see how it handled that. It is one huge thing. Massive.